Hi guys and welcome to today's video where I'll be going through everything I personally use with my Crested Gecko. Now like with my Leopard Gecko video I do actually have a shopping list for Crested Geckos which I will link below. However in this video I will be talking about what I specifically use with my Crested Gecko. And just a side note I am actually hoping to do more videos on these guys um, just because Crested Geckos are such sweet docile little creatures like look at Lyra adorable <laughs> so if you have anything you specifically want to see in a video let me know below but yeah let's look at what I use with Miss Lyra here so first of all her tank I use a 60 by 45 by 60 centimeter exoterra glass terrarium now of course 45 by 45 by 60 is the minimum for an adult but Lyra actually came with this tank and she uses all of the space there is no way I'd ever downgrade her from this um, she whizzes around it she uses it all and if anything I would probably upgrade rather than downgrade one of the things I use to clean the tank is the exoterra terrarium glass cleaner I know people have various ways of removing these really annoying watermarks but this seems to work quite well for me next is lighting so I use the jungle dawn 22 watt LED I mainly have this for plant growth, however I think LEDs are great for distinguishing day from night without adding any extra heat to the tank. This particular LED I actually bought back when I was putting her bioactive tank together originally and this was actually back in March 2016. So I've actually had this light for almost four years now without any issues. The next thing I use, and I totally forgot to mention these in my Leopard Gecko video, I actually had to edit them in afterwards, but it was fittings. Fittings I use for lighting and heating. So for the LED, I use the Arcadia Reptile Ceramic Lamp Holder and Bracket. One downside to this is it doesn't actually support the weight of the entire lamp particularly well, so I've always had to use a little tile to actually balance it out. Another thing you may notice on top of the tank, other than the rust, the sheer rust of every lid of every Exoterra tank ever. Like seriously, even if you replace this, it rusts straight away. <laughs> it's so annoying. Um, anyway, I have some sort of tin foil. I think some people call it aluminum foil. I'm not sure, but we call it tin foil over here and bubble wrap. Yeah. So um, years ago, when I first got a crested gecko, someone recommended covering up a small area of the mesh lid with this because it helps with humidity and it does really work. I don't think I need it so much with the bioactive tank because there's so much going on. It holds humidity really well. But if you are having problems with keeping the humidity in, I would definitely recommend this. Next is heating. So I use a deep heat projector. <laughs> Shocker, I know. Um, I've actually used this the longest. I got this back in May 2018. And I know that like heating isn't the most common thing people buy with Crested Geckos because they're told you can keep them at room temperature. And yes, setting this up is not cheap and essentially you're only raising the temperature by a few degrees. But if you live in particularly cold areas or like here, it can get a little bit chilly at night. During autumn and winter, it is fantastic. Lyra doesn't go off her food. She is full of energy. The only thing downside I would say is if plants grow near it, it can get a little bit crispy. So, you know. Um, another thing is you won't see them lay under it like the leopard gecko. She doesn't spend a lot of time under it. She goes past it. I've seen her sit near it sometimes, but she isn't always under it or like you don't see her splooting like you would a leopard gecko but I have I have to say I do notice a difference in her especially in autumn and winter the fitting I use for the deep peak projector is just a reptizoo clamp lamp I think it got it off eBay for like 10 pound or something it does the job for the thermostat I use the Habistat pulse proportional stat um, now when I first got the deep heat projector I think I was told that you could use either this type of thermostat or a dimming stat. I believe, knowing me, that this one was probably cheaper and that's why I went for it. I, I love myself a bargain, I do. Um, I later found out that the dimming stat is probably better in the long run because the deep heat projector should last longer if you're using it with a dimming stat. I may replace this in the future but for now it's doing a good job. 
it's only set to about 75 degrees I think so you know there's pro it's not, probably not using too much energy but it you know it's, it's doing well to read the temperature and humidity I just have this it's a generic thermometer hygrometer I got from eBay it is set next to the thermostat probe so it can tell me what temperature Lyra would be exposed to under the deep heat projector as well as the humidity in the tank now speaking of spraying on the tank I use a pressure sprayer now this is from Parkland I don't know what brand that is like Parkland I, I got it off eBay <laughs> I'm on eBay a lot and I believe it wasn't too expensive it works really well um, it can hold a lot of water I you know it does what it does you may have also noticed that I have a misting system in my tank so my boyfriend actually made me that um, and it's super effective the only downside is that the timer we use the minimum time we can set for the mister to come on is a minute and that's quite a lot of water so if anyone knows a timer that can be set in seconds please let me know because i do want to go back to using that misting system it's just it was coming on for like way too long before we move on you may notice i don't use a uv light with lyra she is actually my only gecko i don't have a uv light with but i have heard whether this is nationwide or just store to store but i have heard there's some sort of rule that's come in in the uk that they can't sell your crested gecko unless you're going to provide uv now someone told me this happened in global geckos i know it's a very well-known shop here in the uk um and then i was in another reptile shop a local one a few days ago and overheard someone explaining uv for a crested gecko to a potential customer so maybe this is going to be shop to shop maybe this is nationwide i don't know i would like to provide a uv light with lyra one downside is we don't really have that many diets that don't contain synthetic d3 i think the arcadia one is the only one i know of so if like pangea or apache want to come out with the same kind of diet they're already making but take out the synthetic d3 as like just an additional one like the d3 free range um i'm gonna coin that i'll take a percentage <laughs> but like if they did that so many more people i think would be open to using uv and not be so worried that they're oversupplying both synthetic and sort of a more natural d3 if that makes sense so that i just wanted to put that here because i know some people in the uk might be new to crested geckos and they might also be experiencing this rule and not know what to do for me i'd probably use the shade dweller like i use with my leopard geckos just because of the height of the tank it's going to weaken as it has to travel so that should be fine for your crested gecko substrate wise i use earth mix by arcadia as you can see it certainly promotes plant growth and is totally safe for your gecko the leaf litter in here i actually got myself from a forest and um, i have a whole video on how i made that safe for this tank so you can check that out if you like also i would like to say i'm not going to go through every single part of this tank and what i've used because i believe i did that in my step-by-step -step how to build a bioactive tank video and that literally goes layer to layer what i use what i recommend um, and just how to put together a bioactive tank so once again i will link that below if you want to check that out all i will say is i like to use a variety of woods cork vines just different textures in here uh, strong enough and big enough to hold the crested gecko and another great thing is obviously you can see her golden pothos kind of took over her tank but even though some of these areas aren't producing fresh leaves they have left behind strong enough vines that will actually support her weight so that's really cool because then i get free vines um obviously if you're not going to do a bioactive tank you might be using fake plants and stuff all i would say is make sure you've got lots of coverage lots of places to climb so they don't just have to rely on the glass um, and lots of places to hide the three main places alira likes to hide and sleep during the day are her coconut hide the cork hollow in the corner and her snake plant she spends a lot of time on that and finally food so i have a whole variety of food that i like to offer her i think it could be quite boring to only offer one diet all the time but i can appreciate these diets are quite expensive so i understand um what i would say is if you do want to offer loads of different flavors and you don't want to pay loads and maybe get the smaller 
uh, pouches of the food. But obviously I also have a Chihua, Drogo, and he likes this food as well. Now I mainly have Pangea food as you can see but I also do have some from Leap and Leeches and Arcadia. If you do have a picky gecko though I would recommend the Watermelon Diet by Pangea. If your gecko is anything like Lyra they will go absolutely crazy for it. Now in terms of food bowls I use these little plastic food cups and bottle lids. I kind of use and reuse them. I think it's quite wasteful to use them once and just throw them out. So you will notice they'll be scattered around my gecko's tanks because basically I just let the cleanup crew clean them. So they get a free meal, they eat them, they do an incredible job at cleaning them and then once they are out I do give them a wash around with water uh, just to make sure everything is out. Alternatively sometimes if the leftovers are quite fine and they can dry out um, you can just pop that out. It goes like rock hard and it just pops out and you can reuse it. So I'm always just reusing different food bowls. But I tend to keep them like Lyra's only has Lyra's and Drogo's only has Drogo's. That makes sense. So anyway, I think that is everything. As I said at the beginning, I would like to do more Crested Gecko videos in the future. So if you're into that, please make sure you are subscribed. But thank you for watching guys and goodbye. Wouldn't you like close it? Wait, no. Oh!